Good morning, good morning, Big Square. RoadDrew.com with your morning horn of Z's, your sip of coffee. And to get myself in the holiday spirit, I am wearing the world's worst light coin Christmas shirt. <laughs> Why is it the world's worst? Well, it's, it's one of those ugly Christmas shirts, but it's made of polyester. I put this on and I start sweating. Luckily, it's freezing out. He starts sweating and itching. <laughs> Don't if you see this shirt, don't buy it unless they change what it's made out of. I hate polyester, <laughs> and I know Bitcoin Ben has one of these too. We should be having like an ugly Litecoin Christmas shirt contest. Um, and speaking of Ben, I want to thank Ben and Kelly for their fundraiser show on Saturday. We blew out the number we we're searching for ten thousand dollars for Toby's charity. If you still want to donate, right here, right at the top of Road to Ruta, Toby's Memorial Fund. Um, check it out. And if you have any extra fiat money lying around that you're like, eh, it's going to be toilet paper anyway, give some to the cause. Thank you very much. All right. Big day. Big day in the repo market. Big day in understanding what's happening, at least on the road to Ruta side. Um, first, yes, there was a repo today. There were two, actually. Um, the overnight is lower than usual. Usually it's up 70, 80. Uh, billion, 90 billion. They've even done 100 billion on the overnight. Today's was 56.4. Why? Because they also did one of those new fangled deals, uh, a 28 day repo uh, for. Uh, it's interesting because they did it for $25 billion, which would put us up in the $80 billion range, 70, 80 billion. Um, but look what was submitted 43 billion. So there was there was some people who didn't get their repos. And what do they do? They got to pay a higher price in the market. If they absolutely and they all absolutely have to have it. So the the um the BIS came out with a a report called September stress in dollar repo markets passing or structural. Um <laughs> interesting report from the BIS saying it's structural. It's not passing. So what the Fed told us in September is full of shit. Um, what's really going on, as we've talked about many times, is uh, the trust is leaving the repo market. Now, a lot of people thought it was just the banks. Which banks don't trust each other? Um, and JP Morgan, obviously, Deutsche Bank, Citibank, all the big ones. Uh, they shouldn't trust each other. But also in the repo market, and, and what the BIS says is most of the repo market, or a big chunk of it, are the highly leveraged, what shall we call them? We can call them hedge funds, why not? Highly leveraged hedge funds. So basically the way JP Morgan was stealing money with derivatives was buying treasuries and then loaning them out on the repo market, getting a little extra kick for their buck and loading up the derivatives. We saw that's why they have $11 trillion in derivatives in the first quarter of last year or this year, 2019. But the $11 trillion was actually a bet for what they were about to do, which was to get out of that, the, the, um, the repo market. That JP Morgan by far, and uh, I don't know if I have I don't have the article, but uh, Zero Hedge did an article on it was J.P. Morgan removing itself from the repo market. Why would J.P. Morgan remove itself from the repo market? Uh, two things. One, they're changing the regulations so that a repo counts as a loan and not a U.S. Treasury um, asset on their books. That's a big deal with someone like J.P. Morgan who is ranked right now as the riskiest bank because they had all these loans out, but they were only overnight loans. But that's why Jamie Dimon and Jerome Powell are screaming, oh, we need to change the rules so they can continue their rig job. And their rig job was buying U.S. Treasuries, putting them into the repo market to get a little extra money, and by the way, loading up on derivatives to cover any kind of risk. So it was a long-term capital management type tool. to, and, and we're talking trillions of dollars in derivatives. It's so ridiculous what these banks are allowed to do. But Jamie Dimon and friends knew that they'd have to stop doing that by the end of this year, which is come uh, December 31st, because they got to cook the books by then. So all year, they were dumping their, they were getting out of the repo market, meaning 
that they weren't putting their treasuries up for loan. That's why we had repo stress. One of the reasons, one of the main reasons. But before they did that, they put $11 trillion on in derivatives, knowing they were going to do it to make money off their rigging of the market. Way too big a player. Way too. How can you allow a too big to fail bank in one quarter to place eleven bill or eleven trillion dollars worth of derivative bets? How is that even possibly allowed? It's insane. That's the insane world we live in. Now the big fear is, and why the Fed's having to jump in. They're expecting a whole lot of long term capital management problems. This is from uh, Zero Hedge. The Fed was suddenly facing multiple LTCMs. The BIS offers a stunning explanation of what re really happened on Repocalypse Day. About a month ago, we first laid out how the sequence of liquidity shrinking events that started about a year ago and which uh, starred the largest U.S. commercial bank, J.P. Morgan, ultimately culminated with the mid-September repo explosion. The real thing happened on September 11th, by the way. It wasn't until the Monday after that the the market took heed of it. I'll have more on that. At the Road to Ruta private road timeline post, I will be posting on Thursday or Friday. So yes, a new timeline post. It's going to be a good one. Specifically, we show how J.P. Morgan's drain of liquidity via money markets and reserves parked at the Fed may have prompted the September repo crisis and subsequent launch of not QE by the Fed in order to reduce its at-risk capital and potentially lower its G sub, sub surcharge, currently the highest of all major banks. So that's why Jamie Dimon's coming out saying, we got to change the rules. Of course, he bet on, on, on this happening at the beginning of September with $11 trillion in derivatives. Criminal. Absolutely criminal. Shortly thereafter, the F, uh, Financial Times was kind enough to provide confirmation that the biggest U.S. bank had been quietly rotating out of cash while repositioning its balance sheet in a major way, pushing more than $130 billion of excess cash away from reserves in the process, significantly tightening overall liquidity in the interbank, interbank lending market. So they knew they were going to pull $130 billion out. They put a derivative bet of $11 trillion on it before they did it. That's how criminals make money. What's that got to do with any kind of semblance of what a bank should be? You know, banker, bankers have a huge advantage as, a, as they can create uh, U.S. dollars 10 to 1, and they're betting with them. They're betting in the trillions that they don't have to report. Why is that allowed? Why are too big to fail banks allowed? Because they keep the system going. Without them, the world would implode, and we'd have to go back to free and honest trading. We can't have any of that. The other thing they say in the BIS report that isn't being talked about is the exchanges are on the hook, meaning ICE. When this falls apart, yes, the hedge funds will go down. Yes, the banks will go down. But number one, who has the responsibility? And why did all these exchanges turn into public companies? And every, they used to be all private with the, the largest holders, yet you had to buy a seat on the stock exchange. Why did they get out? Because they were liable. ICE is going to be liable. I hope you don't have any money in back. <laughs> All this is falling apart, and according to Zero Hedge, uh, that's a, this one right here, the Fed reveals when the repo crisis may strike again. I've been talking about it for a while, end of the year when they have to cook their books again. It was the end of the year in September that they had to cook their books for the end of the quarter. Think J.P. Morgan. Think especially the hedge funds that have to tell all their rich customers we either made money or lost money. And if they all try to get out at the same time, good night. And that's exactly what uh, the BIS report was talking about. If all the hedge funds have to bail, it's over. And they might have to bail. So we are right in the heart of another crisis between now and the end of the year. Um, if you think about it, the last crisis started right in the middle of the month. Well, it truly started on September 11th. Um, I'll be factoring into that, into my analysis for the timeline article or timeline post for Private Road on, on Thursday. I think I need to do it Thursday because we're running out of time. And then it goes into 2020 and what's going to happen then. So make sure you're 
on the road to Ruta for that. Um, uh, here, the Joe Hedge talking about hedge funds. Any sustained disruption in this market with daily turnover in the U.S. capital markets of about a trillion dollars a day could quickly ripple through the financial system. The freezing up of repo markets in late 2008 was one of the most damaging aspects of the great financial crisis. Keeping the above in mind, here's a quick remind of what happened on September 16th. The secured overnight funding rate, the new repo market-based U.S. dollar overnight reference rate, which was supposed to replace over supposed to replace over the next two years more than doubled and the intraday rate jumped about 700 basis points when the repo rates typically fluctuate intraday of 10 basis points or at most 20 basis points. Intraday volatility in the Fed's fund rate exploded. Hot take explanations for this move include a due date for U.S. corporate taxes and a large settlement of U.S. Treasury securities. However, as first we and then now the BIS admits, None of these temporary factors can fully explain the exceptional jump in the repo rate. Mind you, that won't happen again because the Fed has changed how they calculate the repo rates. It is not allowed to spike because they do some kind of twisted moving average. So it'll bump the moving average up a little over the, I think it's uh, 30 days or so. It's ridiculous. They're basically hiding the fact that the repo market is still in trouble. But hey, nothing new for the Fed, right? And then they go on to say um, <clears throat> high demand for secured repo funding from non-financial institutions such as hedge fund heavily engaged in leveraging up relative value trades was a key factor behind the chaos. So the again, it gets to hedge funds. Hedge funds are going to blow the system apart because hedge funds are trying to play the same game that the big criminal banks are. Except they don't have the... They don't get the same cheap money that the banks get, but they can leverage up 100, 200, 300 to 1. There is no limit on the insanity in a hedge fund. This is not going to end pretty, my friends. It's not going to end pretty at all. A really good report out from Bianco Research. Go to biancoresearch.com. Um, and this is some great charts, and that's the balance sheet of the Fed right there. And as you can tell, uh, that's from the September 11th date. We have a huge jump um, th that started at three three seventy five trillion. I believe by the end of the year, it's going to be over what was going on in 2015 and 16. So over four hundred and fifty trillion dollar balance sheet. We'll find out, but right now it's just it's jumped dramatically. And but that's the other thing is. These overnight repo rates are not even included in this in this calculation because, oh, they're such short term. But they're not because they're rolling over every day. So, yes, at least $100 uh, billion more should be added to that, which would put us at four. Actually, the total of rollovers today is going to be $350 billion. So if you jump this, $350 billion, you're at $4,350. You're way up. We're way up here right now. Just because they call them like overnight repos or term repos, it doesn't matter because they keep rolling them over. Yes, they're calling them short term, but they're not re retiring them on short term. So we're really up in the right in this range right here, not far from all time high. Crazy, huh? Okay, here's a, another great chart. How much Fed support is needed to calm the repo markets? This actually, this is really close to the Road to Ruta um, tracking that I've been doing on the private road and on the Patreon. You guys, Patreon is only 10 bucks a month. Make sure you get on Patreon if you're not on the private road. But private road gets everything. Um, very close to the tracking. Uh, they're at 322, 322 billion. Um, what they're not including is the reverse repos, which is a necessary requirement to keep the, um, the overnights down. So just just keep that in mind, um, but yeah, it's right on track with the. I was all excited because you know this they pay. I don't know how much people pay for this research, Bianco Research, and at Road to Rudo, you get it for two ninety nine for a full year, and you get silver coin and a Veritasium token, <sighs> and the timeline article, which is coming out on Thursday, hopefully Thursday. I'm shooting for Thursday because Friday's a big day. 
Um, so that's where we are, my friends. It's crazy out there. Um, hang in there. Hang in there the best you can. A lot of uh, financial chaos is like right at, at we are we are walking over the cliff. Our only a toe is left. The whole body is over the free fall. If you if you talk about the economy walking over a cliff, only probably that the hangnail of the big toe is supporting this market. And when it goes, pretty much everybody agrees now. We're, we're talking Armageddon style, Mad Max style destruction of the old system. There will be no saving it. And no Dick Allgaier, the bad guys aren't going to take over. I'm sorry, but you've been led astray by the darker forces of, uh, of what they want to happen. Remember, they, listen to that song, they. They are not going to get their way this time. The good guys are going to take it out. And then we're going to implement something else. And the people that Dick's listening to, they'll be in jail for their criminal acts, which will be great. It's time to return to our um, our goal here in the United States of America. Peace, justice, and the Americas. Truth, justice. Truth, what the hell is that? And yes, Dick, you are right. We are going crypto. We're just not going to the crypto controlled by the cabal, which is obviously the tether folks and all that. They will be taken down as well. So we're looking good. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be chaotic. That's why you have to, have to have your assets in your own possession only. Everything else will be gone. Just assume it will be gone. And you're not going to know the price of your cryptos, the price of your gold and silver for a long time. Probably months. Because there won't be any exchanges open. All these exchanges are criminal derivative exchanges. We have to invent new exchanges that trade the real thing. It'll probably be very local. You'll be able to sell your, your silver and your, well, your silver local. And your gold local. There will be no global exchange of, of metals. That's actually what they say in the Road to Ruta comics. In the questions they ask at the very end, they talk about one day, Colorland, which is the U.S., will be able to exchange, will, will start trading again in colored flowers, which means they stop trading. The U.S. is going to stop trading with all partners when this all falls apart. We can see it happening in China. But just remember, this has been plan in place for over 110 years. This is the reason they created the Federal Reserve and now it's ended. All right, that's it. That's all I got for you. I'm going to chime in later today. I think we're going to do a uh, live chat. So a live chat, plan it for, I don't know what time, but I'll send out. Oh, by the way, at RoadToRuda.com, there's all this talk about, and Road to Ruta YouTube channel, there's all this talk about uh, YouTube shutting people off. I don't know if I'm going to get shut off. I, I probably not because they want me to get this information out. The bad guys because they want the system to crash too. And I don't deal with the pedo stuff that much anymore. Um, but I don't know if they're going to kick me off of their system. Please, please, please go to roadtorear.com. In the left side, you can sign up for free emails. Free emails and I'll let you know where I'll be posting after this. Probably right to the Road to Ruta uh, channel itself. The, the website. But you get a free book also when you sign up right here on the left side. Name and email, and then you get uh, notified when I post anything. All right? Um, and if you're on YouTube and that's how you follow Road to Ruta, um, that might be going away in the next few days. So I don't know. I don't think so. But um, make sure you're on that site as well, the Road to Ruta email. And you'll get a confirmation email so that it goes through without any problem. All right? Good. This is Bixweer, roadrooter.com. I'll talk to you later.